Alright folks, we're back, and we're in the middle of the episode because I was trying to look at Stein Eric's age, and then my game froze, and then it sped up really fast, and we activated the next episode. I don't know why. Anyway, so yeah, you haven't missed anything. We're just here now. So yeah, yeah. it's me and Stein oh. Eric, and we're doing this. So, who founded the American Federation of Labor? I'm gonna need to click this. There we go. All these questions, uh, seconds to answer, them. because... It's, uh, Gompers, Samuel Gompers. Okay. First vice president was John Adams. <laughs> First ruler to consolidate the Slavic t tribes was Rurik. And it was Priestley who discovered oxygen. <laughs> and of well. course, this one is easy. It's F.S. Fitzgerald who wrote The Great Gatsby. Yeah, that was really easy. <laughs> anyway, now uh, we're doing this one. Marcus Cripple. Yeah, Marcus Cripple and the Tube Heads are the most popular rock group with the kids your age. Anyone who <laughs> likes them is in. If you don't like them or their new hit song, I Love You Blowtorch Eyes, you are a definite geek. You can be concerned <laughs> with peer acceptance or unconcerned with peer acceptance. Uh, I'm concerned. Hello, this is a rock band. <laughs> You can spend your whole allowance on their new album, or not. Uh, if it is really great, I think I'll buy it, yes. Um, have you heard what it was? I love mm. you, blow torch eyes. Okay, <laughs> this, isn't Mer <laughs> this isn't Nirvana, and the album is not Nevermind, alright? Uh, okay, uh, no. We're gonna skip then this I album. <laughs> I will buy Nevermind before that. <laughs> <laughs> so what if none of the cool people want to dangle with you? You are your own person. You are your own lonely person, but you're probably a lot smarter than everyone else, too. Social spheres <laughs> drop slightly, intellectual spheres increases. Wow, awesome. While walking around in the store with your friends, you notice that he sneaks a small item into his pocket. You ask him what he's doing, and he tells you how easy it is to shoplift, saying, They never check kids. You could be honest or dishonest. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I am dishonest. Here's I was so nice last time, now I'm kind of evil. <laughs> so okay, Steineric has turned to the dark side of the forest, folks. You can urge <laughs> yeah. him to put it back, refuse to stay with him, or steal something. I... No, um, if I was to steal something last time, wait. No, I haven't stolen something. Let's try stealing something. Let's go. Cool. Alright, he's gonna steal something. <laughs> this yeah. kind of behavior is not in your character. Stealing <laughs> is something, is a common childhood experience, but if it develops into a habit, it will cost you later. Wow. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> More sexual nature. In the schoolyard, your friends are sitting around discussing something very secretively. Once again, I must point out that we're actually doing things in reverse order. We started at the top, so we c I could try and get some new questions in here. So, yeah. Stein Eric, as he's getting older, is actually getting younger, because his questions are designed to be for younger kids. I'm so, almost like Benjamin yeah. Button. I'm getting younger <laughs> instead of older. That's awesome. <laughs> Yes, exactly like Benjamin Button. Anyway, so in the schoolyard, your friends are sitting around discussing something very secretively. You go, go over to see what is going on with them, and you hear one of them say something very strange. It has to do with the way you were made. You can be disgusted, skeptical, or unaffected. Unaffected. You can deny that your parents would ever do that, ask your mother for the real story, or do nothing. Uh, I will ask my mother for another story. <laughs> if you were truly unaffected, you wouldn't care enough to ask. You should examine <laughs> your feelings more closely. <laughs> that was good. Your friend has borrowed a dollar from you, and has been promising to pay you back for weeks. Every time you ask him for the money, he puts you off. You can be patient Whoa. or impatient. You get a punch in his face. <laughs> you know, tricking me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, okay. So, patient or impatient? Uh, impatient. <laughs> you can stop being his friend or have a discussion about the money. I love a discussion. <laughs> your impatience causes tempers to flare between you and your friend. He stops speaking with you and you never get paid back. 
What the shit? By the way, <laughs> I need to remember to do this. Here we go. Okay. All right, Melissa Harper is the prettiest girl in your class. This is the third prettiest girl in your class, but whatever. You have been giving each other the eye for about two weeks now. You are all set to ask her for a date when your best friend, who happens to be taller and better looking than you, confesses that he cannot sleep at night because of her. That's probably me. You know, <laughs> best friend who happens to be taller and better looking. Oh yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's all right. Really so I ask you your advice on the best way to ask her for a date, unaware that you too are smitten by her. You can be jealous, frank about your feelings, or sympathetic. Um, sympathetic. You should have sympathy for me. So you can give me advice or admit that you like her too. I got to admit that I like her too. Your sympathy is much appreciated, but also presents a dilemma for you and your friend. You can agree that you can both ask her out, or agree not to interfere with your friend's bid for her attention. I want her to, so yeah, we can ask both. This doesn't sit comfortably with either you or your friend. You both decide that your, that your friendship is worth more than a date with Melissa. Your, your teacher and your mother have traded recipes for an upcoming bake sale. Before you leave school, your teacher asks if you would be kind enough to run a booth at the bake sale, especially for her. Immediately, your friends begin to snicker behind your back. You can be a wise guy, embarrassed but compliant, or flattered. Mmm, flattered. You can say, I'm not going to do no stupid bake sale. You can say, yes ma'am, or you can say, I would be happy to help you. I will not do any stupid uh, bake sale. So you're flattered, but you're going to say, <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's really not, incurred. no, that yeah, doesn't make any sense. Uh... Yeah, I will not help her, so I will take the other one. Okay. So you're going to be a wise guy. Yeah. You score big said. points with your friends. The next time the teacher talks with your mother, she mentions how surprised she was at your behavior. You are an embarrassment to your family. Familial spiel sphere <laughs> takes a bad drop. <laughs> wow, that's bad. <laughs> you need eyeglasses. Mm. Well, why? The first, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> One of your eyes has been gouged out. You need eyeglasses now. I, I don't know. Anyway, the first day you I wear them in school, everyone calls you four eyes. Your parents refuse to give you contact lenses. I don't know why an eye being gouged out would mean eyeglasses, but whatever. Yeah. You can be hurt or self-conscious. Uh, say it again. Hurt or self-conscious? Uh, self-conscious. You can refuse to wear the glasses, or you can wear the glasses and tolerate the names. Mm, I will wear the glasses and tolerate the names because I'm proud. <laughs> your social status suggests that you will eventually get the support you need to overcome, to overcome your self-consciousness from your friends. Yeah. You are in the candy store buying candy with a $5 bill given to you by your mother. The, your bill comes to 50 cents, but the man gives you back change but no dollars. You can be angry, confused, or content. Angry. <laughs> you can leave the store or question the man. I question the man. The man makes an honest mistake, he says, and gives you your money, and tells you to be more respectful to adults. <laughs> the boy who sits next to you in school has just passed you a note, folded in a tight square. He mentions to you to read it. You look around the room. Miss Hennessy, the meanest teacher in the school, has her back to the class. The note says, What has more crust than the entire surface of the earth? You can be curious slash daring or afraid slash reluctant. Mm, the first one. You can write a note back asking what, or you can crumple the paper up and throw it away. I uh, throw it away. So that's going to be inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Pick a mood and go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it didn't work. Well, no, you're being, you're curious slash daring, and then you're just crumpling it away. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Oh. Okay, um, yeah, the second one, then. <laughs> well, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. 
The noise attracts Miss Hennessy's attention. She begins walking down the aisle, and your heart begins to race. She looks you squarely in the eye. The smell of her perfume is so overpowering it could kill you all by itself. <coughs> you cough. She says, can't you use that scrap of paper for something else before you throw it away? Protect natural resources. You breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, awesome. Man, I wish childhood would end already. This is actually the third time I've gone through it, because I've also gone through it with Phoenix, too. So I'm really, really I, sick of the childhood level. I mean, level. Like, there are so many stuff that is happening in my life uh, childhood. I mean, like, <laughs> it's happening every time. I mean, like, all the stuff is so amazing. <laughs> well, yeah. Your mother has given you permission to have a party. You want to invite most of the kids from your class. There is one child you have second thoughts about inviting. His name is Louis Field. Feedback. All the kids call him Louie Feedbag because he is very fat. You mention uh. to your group of friends that you are thinking about inviting Louis. They make faces and pig noises. Some of them say that if you invite the bag, they will stay home. You can be ambivalent slash have mixed feelings, pressured by peers to give in, or angry. <coughs> I will be angry. You can invite Louis or not. Uh, I'm not going to invite him. Inappropriate response. What? Uh, can I be angry? And, okay, great. Um, uh, then I will be angry and I will invite him. Up. <laughs> you call the kids who don't want him there a bunch of jerks and threaten to beat up anyone who makes fun of Lewis at your party. You have shown courage and tolerance for individual differences and this has made you stronger. Lewis is completely yeah. overjoyed. This is the first time he has ever felt like one of the guys. Some of the friend, some of your friends do stay home that night and refuse to speak with you at school. Lewis's mother calls you up and thanks you for being so generous. Lewis's mother also happens to be extremely rich. On your next school vacation, she flies you and Lewis to Hawaii for a week to stay with relatives there. Aloha. Wow. Wow. I'm so lucky. <laughs> oh, I always make the right friends. <laughs> it's a hot, sunny day. You and a friend are sitting around trying to think of something to do. Dad is sitting in the shade, napping on a chair. You get a great idea. Let's play a practical joke on Dad. You can be mischievous or have second thoughts. I'm mis mischievous. Oh. You can let the air out of the car tires, spray Dad with the hose, give Dad a hot foot like on the cartoons, or let Dad sleep. I like in the cartoons, hot foot. <laughs> you should know better than that. What's the matter with you? You are old enough to know how dangerous things like that can be. You get a stern lecture and get grounded for a week. Dad gets a mummy foot and walks around cringing for a while. Wow, poor dad. <laughs> Jill Braddy is always untying your shoes and running away. Today she is wearing a skirt. She is bent over picking up a pile of books from the floor. <laughs> you can be a mischievous or absorbed in more important things. I will be um, mischievous. You can seek revenge, seek revenge or not. I will uh, seek revenge. You think of two ways that you can get back at stupid Jill. You can run up and lift her skirt up over her head, or run by and push her so she falls. I will lift up her shirt. <laughs> wow. You take a big lead and start running towards her. Just before you get her, she moves away and puts her foot out. She trips you and you go sliding down the school hall, landing at the foot feet of Mr. Quincy, the meanest teacher in school. Oh no! Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, snap. <laughs> Jill is obviously oh, quite a bit smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> You've oh, just turned sure. off the television set, and your room is pitch dark. Through the shadows, you notice that your closet door is open just a crack. Oh, yeah. you, can oh, almost, you can almost see the image of a black-hooded axe murderer squinting at you through the door. He is waiting, waiting for you to close your eyes and fall asleep. In the quiet of the night, you can hear his hoarse breath making deep gurgling sounds. You look away from the door, then look back. It's open a bit farther than it was last time. If you can only make it to the closet and shut the door tight, you know he won't be able to get out and murder you in your sleep. The morning light will destroy him, so you won't have to worry about seeing him when you wake up. 
You can be afraid or calm. Uh, I would be calm. You can pull the covers over your head, get help, sneak out of the bed, or go to sleep. I would go to sleep. Oh no, I, I can't die. Um, I mean... Uh, you don't have much of an imagination, do you? You're only young ones. You could be locked up for imagining <laughs> these things later, so live a little. <laughs> it's time to sell raffle tickets for the school baseball team again. You can be motivated or embarrassed. Um, motivated. You can try to do it alone or enlist your father's help. Uh, I'll be kind of mean to my dad, so yeah, I can say, yeah, I want to um, listen to my dad or talk to him, yeah. Okay. What a team. You move from door to door with confidence, selling four whole books in less than an hour. It is a powerful bonding experience that strengthens family ties. You go out for an ice cream soda to celebrate your successful partnership. Wow. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. Holy cow, how long could childhood possibly be? Your best friend challenges you to a rock-throwing competition. You can be competitive well, or reluctant. Um, uh, reluctant sounded interesting, yeah. You can turn down the offer and suggest a different game or accept the challenge. Accept the challenge. That's not going to work. Oh. You're reluctant, so you won't accept the challenge. Uh, I just, yeah, I won't accept it, though. Okay. I can just, I just need to stop you from making these inappropriate responses. Your friend yeah. threatens to tell everyone at school that you are a girl unless you throw the rock. You can accept the challenge or keep refusing. Um, I got to keep refusing. Your friend calls you a chicken. Oh my goodness, now it's dead. There is one more ice pop in the freezer that is being saved for another family member. Your mouth waters at the thought of this cool, tasty treat. My mouth waters at the thought of childhood ending. You can be hungry or able to resist. Uh, since it's the ending, the problem is if, I, if I'm going to eat it, I'm going to end up being a fat kid. So, uh, this is kind of logic, you know. Um, I'm not, I don't want to be addicted to sweets, so no, I'm not going to uh, eat it. Okay, you're going to leave it alone. Yeah. You don't expect to be rewarded for this act of simple consideration, do you? The knowledge that you have respected the privacy of others should be enough. Does this make you angry? Yes or no? Uh, yes. It does make you angry. Just about everything makes you angry. Yeah. Well, I'll have to admit, that was a rather smug remark. I apologize. That's <laughs> cute. Your friends are all waiting for you to come out after school. You have a ton of homework, and you've been watching television since you came home. On your way out the door, on your way out, your mother asks, "Did you do all your homework?" You can be honest, dishonest, or semi-honest. Um, uh, honest. You can say yes, no, or I've only got a little left. Uh, um. If you're being honest, you'll say no. I think. No. Your mother replies, you are not going out unless you do your homework. You can stay in 15 minutes and fake the homework, or stay in and do the homework. Uh, do the homework. Familial and emotional characteristics increase because you are honest. Socially, your score drops slightly because you lose the play experience with friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I get to do homework. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have just been ordered to bed by your parents in the middle of a favorite television show. You can be angry or desperate. Uh, I got to be desperate because I want to see that TV show, you know. You can it's complain. Desperate housewives, hello. Okay, you can complain about <laughs> having to go to bed, beg for ten more minutes, or whine. Um, uh, I go to whine. <laughs> You say, please, in a breathless and desperate tone. Neither of your parents can stand it when you do this. Everyone in the house has a, had a hard day. You hear a loud voice say, if you're going to do that, do it in your room. You are ignored until you stop. Sometimes it doesn't pay to be so dramatic. <laughs> At school, all of your friends are talking about a television program that you could not stay up to watch. A friend asks if you saw it. You can be embarrassed or unashamed. 
We're not unashamed. You can say that you didn't watch that show, say you weren't allowed to see it, or say that, yeah, you watched it and it was really great. Um, uh, I didn't watch it. Your confidence keeps them from making fun of you. Someone even offers to let you sleep over at his house the next time it is on. Sometimes friends can be really great. Yeah, that's wow. good. Oh, this is... Be careful on this one. While you are outside, playing alone, a car comes over to the side of the road, and the oh, driver motions for you to come over. You notice the license plate says OBO237. Oh, you can this be, is so scary. This gave me nightmares last time, seriously. You can be so curious scared. slash helpful or suspicious. Uh, suspicious. <laughs> Walk over or stay where you are. Uh, well, um, stay where I am. <laughs> he motions for you to come closer. He has a kind enough face. You hear him say that he is a policeman looking for a friend of yours. He asks if you will get in and help him find your friend. You can walk yeah, slash right. run away, get in the car, or tell him you can't do that. Uh, run away. <laughs> you move away from the man, suspicious that he might not be telling the truth. This is a smart, intellectual sphere rises sharply. This man hurts children. That one is very scary for the people, because if I was uh, saying something wrong there, I could really die, because that man was yeah, we know. really evil. That was how the last part ended. <laughs> or the part before yeah. the last one, rather. Oh, so it is recorded? That part was recorded, yeah. It was right after that that it, that it oh, the recording went out. Okay. Because now the story is getting interesting. I mean, like, now it's been kind of boring because I know the no kind of answers from before. But now it is getting more interesting because uh, the answer is kind of new <laughs> from now on. While rummaging around in the kitchen drawer, you come across a book of matches. You can be curious or conscientious. Uh, conscientious. You can put away the book of matches, light one in the kitchen, or take the matches to your room and close the door. <laughs> uh, put them away. This is kind of obvious. Alright, so you can, you can put the book of matches away, light one in the kitchen, or just become a walking fire hazard. That's the third option. <laughs> We're gonna put the book of matches away. Yeah. A positive choice. There is nothing to be gained here except disaster. You may have just prevented a major loss to you and your family. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> you are in school and the teacher is giving a boring lecture. The boy sitting two seats away is rolling up a piece of paper and putting it in his mouth. Using the barrel of his pen, he spits the paper at the blackboard, where it lands with a wet splat. The teacher is furious. She screams, who did this? Everyone in the class is howling until she promises that if the person who did this will not come forward, the whole class will get a punishment. You are probably the only person who saw the true culprit. You can be angry, anxious, or have mixed feelings. Um, mixed feelings. You can keep quiet or raise your hand. Um, raise my hand. You choose to resolve the ambivalence by taking a risk. This is a healthy response. You feel a little concerned about what others might think of you. You choose to put concern for the welfare of others and a desire to avoid unjust punishment above the desire to do something that might be considered more socially acceptable. You've just passed through childhood phase of life. Family life is yes. progressing poorly. You don't seem to have the strong contact with your family that helps provide foundations for good relationships later. Maybe it's because you set your dad on fire. <laughs> Did that? Yes! Don't no. you remember? <laughs> Oh, yeah, because that turned me into a foot down. Yes! You set oh, your no. father on fire! <laughs> anyway, physically, you are not very healthy. Be careful to avoid situations that could lead to illness. Socially, this okay. can be an awkward phase of life, especially when you hit the ripe old age of 9 or 10. Should you not like... Should you like girls? Should you not like girls? And be gay? Decisions, decisions, all in all, you are extremely lovable. You are well-mannered and respectful of adults <laughs> and maybe mistake. I may be mistaken, but I see a little bit of Casanova in training. Now, regarding okay. your emotional and personality development, you are a remarkably trustworthy young man. Your sense of ethics and fair play are quite remarkable for a child your age who is willing to set his father on fire. You are a gentle, easy. You have a gentle, easygoing way about you most of the time, and would never destroy something by setting it on fire unless it was your dad. 
You have not <laughs> had very many schoolyard brawls, except for that one that I won for you. And you seem to be able to control your temper, even when the girls giggle as you walk by. Yeah, you're not going to set them on fire, too. You are about to enter adolescence. <laughs> it is a somewhat hectic time of life, full of surprises. There will be many, very high highs, and many low lows. With each year, you will gain new responsibilities. You also notice that people will begin to start to forgive you less for things that blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Whatever. Uh, yes, <laughs> girls, we get it. <laughs> I mean, like, so this can, uh, oh my goodness, I can either be gay or heterosexual. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I have to think of my questions now. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to end this part here, and yeah, hopefully we're about to start get, to get into new questions that I've only seen the female versions of, so I haven't seen the male versions of these new ones, so hopefully I'll be a bit less irritable. Maybe I won't be. Yeah, same here. <laughs> and Stein Eric, <laughs> Stein Eric will always be irritable. Everything makes him angry. So, yeah. yeah. We'll see you in the next part. And, yeah. See yeah. See you then. It's big. Bye-bye, and we are going to miss you, but in the next part, we are not going to miss you anymore. So, go and watch. Yay.